Hey everyone, it's Hel, the vocalist of the melodic metal band Ignea. I will be joining D Metal Galaxy for a live stream QA chat this Saturday, October 2nd, 8 pm Irish time. It will be really cool to see you there. Hello everyone! Hi! The Metal Galaxy YouTube channel. For those who don't know us, we bring interviews, reviews, and metal news from the Metal Galaxy into your living room. Today, me and uh, Veronica are going to talk about a new release called Bestia with Hell from Ignea. Last year, we had quite an introduction. However, for those who missed it and don't know uh, Helle yet, can you please uh, share us one sentence about you and your band Ignea? Hello. Uh, hey guys, I'm Hel, the vocalist of the Ukrainian melodic metal band Ignea. We play uh, a mixture of different genres of metal and combine it with storytelling. Great. Two sentences, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> So hello, how are you doing now? Um, comparing to you know previous interview, what has changed um, like to last year? Well, at least we didn't have pandemic back then. It was better, I mean, but still, you know, um, I'm doing pretty much okay. Very busy, overloaded because of the release that we're having, like best year release, and mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be still an independent release before the next full-length album that is going to be with Napalm Records. So I'm like the main person who manages it all. Hmm. And uh, at the same time, we have to uh, continue working on the next album. So it's like I'm working on two releases, all the Patreon stuff um, and a lot of other things. So that's why super busy, hmm. but you know, and a bit optimistic that tours are going to come back next year, I'd say. Like yeah. Certainly, we believe that. Um, so that were a short question. So let's go with a very long one. With okay. Realms of Fire, you have been talented as a li lyrics and writer, as it was the first time you wrote prosa. What learning lessons did you apply in this new EP? Bestia, and how did you experience the writing process this time? I think that even though I had some experiments last time, in any case, when you're writing something, it's mostly inspiration that drives you. That's why, you know, things that you could apply in, in the latter album, they can be different in another one. And uh, for example, if with the last album, everything that I wrote for, in terms of lyrics and the tales that accompanied the album, everything was my imagination and it was out of my head, just like one of the titles of the songs from that album. And um, with this one, with Bestia, I took inspiration from uh, the Ukrainian mythology. So I didn't make it up. I read about it. And also, Bestia is different from the Realms of Fire and Death because it's a split EP. So we're making it with another band, our friends Arsadu. And so we've got like this release is split into two, into two parts. One is ours and one is theirs. And we also have a common song with them. That's why you know, it's different in everything and it's a more exp experimental work for us, I'd say. Interesting. We will talk later uh, about Arsedo, but I'm wondering then, you, um, like you said, you didn't make up everything, so you digged into Ukraine mythology, mythology. So I'm wondering what was the inspiration to dig and learn more about this topic? Well, I think that it wasn't um, it wasn't intentional. It's just um, I remember that we were spending some time together with uh, Ersedo and uh, you know they had like this small instrumental, and um, I just we decided to work together, and I was bathing in the Black Sea, 
and um, under the moonlight, you know, with everything was mm -hmm. super magical and stuff. And uh, I don't know, I just, I decided to write something about mermaids, but not like mm -hmm. from the perspective of the usual mermaids, but more about the Ukrainian version. And these are called Mafkas. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, it was like, I wrote these lyrics in, within just, you know, uh, an hour or something like that. And I think that in the same evening, I just uh, came up with the concept for the entire <laughs> album because I already heard uh, the two songs by Asadu. Mm -hmm. And also, so they have their separate lyrics, but still, like, we managed to make it under one concept that I came up with. And, um, and also, we had, like, two songs that were working really well together right from the mm -hmm. beginning. And that's why they also, like, I knew that they would be about some Ukrainian mythological creatures just because of the concept and stuff. And I just tried to find these creatures that sounded like the songs that Yevgeny already wrote. So this is how it came up. Sometimes it's like good inspiration, just dating and doing and getting yeah. inspiration from things you do. So there wasn't like a, another band that you was th thinking about, it just came spontaneously? Yeah, I don't know. It just came like Ersado are our friends and mm -hmm. we always like they live in another city, but we um, always meet at least once a year and because we are musicians they are musicians we're always sharing some demos and instrumentals and stuff and uh, you know some things sometimes they have like the same ideas or the same riffs so we're just looking in one direction so we mm -hmm. decided to make something together and also it was all happening during the pandemic so, I mean, nothing was really happening and we've just released uh, The Realms of Fire and Death. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's just, um, we just wanted to make some art together. Mm -hmm. Interesting, but then for Ercedo it was like their comeback because they haven't been doing music for nine years and you just came up with this, it fitted them. So I'm wondering, how came it to be that it was uh, their comeback and how was it for you to help them to come back to the music uh, scene with this album? Well, they haven't been active um, as a metal band, but they both uh, took part in quite a lot of projects as composers mm -hmm. and they wrote a lot of songs. They just didn't want to release them and, you mm -hmm. know, they are these guys are, are perfectionists so that's why you know i also can understand that for example you write a song and you try to polish it and polish it and polish it and while you're doing it you already have other ideas and all the things so i think that maybe because like everything is super serious with us at ignea because like for example i'm doing ignea only and i've been doing that for two years so far so um that's why like we just cannot keep silence you know and they could but still every year we were saying to them okay maybe you should release something because we are hearing all these cool songs and you're just you know yeah. writing them into your table so i think that's maybe because like we came and we started working on this um, song together and we were pushing them more than we did before. This is mm -hmm. how this is how it all went. And maybe because it's still a mini album and it's easier to make it than mm -hmm. to make a, an entire album, especially when it's split. So you're not you're basically working like we're working on two songs, they're working on two songs and mm -hmm. one is together, so it's easier, you know, to, mm -hmm. to it's, it's it's a great idea like uh, you're like Igne for me is like a perfectionist band as well everything is fitting together nicely but as well like the styles are very similar i would say Igne uh, they are, are both a bit like atmospheric experimental and so on it's a great combination like yeah, yeah. I think that also Another thing that is common with us and Ersadu is that from the very beginning they were also using the Middle Eastern tunes and this mm -hmm. is something yeah. that Yevgeny as the composer and Ersadu's 
they they also like this stuff and this is why also it was very easy you know to combine it and you're both ukrainian if i'm not mistaken yeah yeah we're just living in uh, different cities but we're all ukrainian well actually the vocalist of Resado comes from a different country but like um Right now, they don't want to disclose any details about their personalities yet, and I'm not the one to share it. That's why, like, I think that at some point they will do it on their own. Yeah, that's fine, and it's great to see that Ukrainian metal scene. Like, there is so much more uh, to it. Like, a second band I just discover, and really like it's a great band uh, to listen. Thank you. I'm, I'm just hoping that after Bestia, they will continue releasing yeah. stuff because they have a lot to share. Certainly, yeah. we hope so as well. For sure. Like when I first uh, seen the video Mermaids, I was like, oh, this is something interesting, something new. This is very nice. Thank you. So yeah, I, I hope I hope they will continue because yeah, the, the sound sounds nice. And well, uh, uh, on the fifth of October, which is like. Tuesday, I believe they will drop a single, another song that is going to be mm. on the EP as well. So you you will be able to hear it sooner than the EP comes out. Okay, that's cool. Great. We will look forward to it, and we certainly will uh, show it, uh, share it in the group The Metal Galaxy. So can you tell us about the video mermaids, like the idea behind the video, the story within it? So like uh, basically the story behind the song I came up with this story is about mermaids or Ukrainian mafkas who are actually, you know, bored with their everyday life and the routine and everything. And uh, they cannot find their place anywhere in the sea or in the woods, like because Ukrainian mafkas, they don't really live only underwater they leave pretty much everywhere and uh yeah so that was the idea of the song and i also thought that it's a very uh, human thing you know because sometimes when you're just sitting in one place and everything seems to be fine but something feels wrong you know about all this situation and mm -hmm. you're thinking that the very next minute something will go wrong and your paradise will just drop off and uh this is this is something about mermaids as well but uh the vocalist of our shadow she was working on the concept of the video based mm -hmm. on this song so and uh she decided to develop it as that we see how these mermaids live in different places again mm -hmm. in the waters and the woods but um you know there is a phrase in this song um because all the pearls and treasures i hear under mm -hmm. mermaid's hair the essence of being so that's why uh, it was decided to make everything around these pearls mm -hmm. and actually in the video you can see that there are two strangers going and the mermaids smell them or they feel them and in the end they just turn them into these pearls mm -hmm. And they continue you know just playing with this world so nothing really very serious but mm -hmm. this is just showing the everyday life of mermaids that's why i think that when we came with this idea to the director i think in my opinion it's good that there are not so very dynamic um screens in this video because it's just you know you're just observing the life these yeah it's a very capturing uh video and speaking of video uh i'm wondering did maria and ivan again help you visualizing your music or was it somebody else this time no this time uh, it was an absolutely different director and uh it was there wasn't you know a, a crew or anything it was just him uh he's also a ukrainian director of Vladislav Mombuzil and uh yeah, you can you can see like um, his name properly under the YouTube video in the description, and um, yeah, he uh, he also worked as a cameraman and he also edited the video. So and we had some like I was working with uh, two girls uh, who helped me with the costumes and the makeup and the you know all this 
turning into mermaids and stuff. So, yeah, it was actually really a very small crew video. How long did it took for filming? Well, um, actually, like we were planning to shoot it within one day, but mm -hmm. then we had actually half of the day to shoot it because, you know, everything happens that we didn't think of, but uh, it was a work day, so there were traffic jams and we had to, like this location, it was near Kiev, so we had to drive there for more than one hour. And a lot of other things went wrong, including like the rented camera. So it took some time to fix it. And, you know, but it was the first time we were shooting um, outside, outdoors. And uh, I mean, when the sun goes down, you just have no, no possibility to just prolong your rented space. You know, you just have no time. That's why a lot of um, a lot of um, a lot of shots were made from the first take, mm -hmm. and there there is, I guess that there is like 30, 40 percent that we actually didn't film that mm -hmm. would have been that would enrich this video even more. But this is you know this is how it goes, and uh, it it also would be, I think that we would lose like this vibe if we just continued filming the next day because it would be different. It's still a great uh, video. Like I wouldn't say that there were any troubles filming it. I think it's like looking to your previous re release, like Dean Slammer, this one, I think it's next level. Like it has so much detail and so on. It's like the band has evolved, grown uh, further. Thank you. We're now working on another video for another song from EP, which is Magura's Last Kiss. And um, I'm very, I have a lot of um, hopes for that video because it's going to be with a larger scale, you know, and there are a lot of people involved. So just fingers crossed that everything will go okay as planned. We look forward to it. So more stuff to share in our uh, group. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, well, we just talked about videos and so on, but back to lyrics. So I'm wondering, uh, like this one has again stories and so on, but can it be seen as an extended lyric book as realms of fire and death? Or would you say every story is like on its own standalone? Uh, yeah, in this case, like every every song has its own story and every song is about a different character, you know. So for us, like the first song, Bosorkun, is about the Ukrainian, like the Carpathian wind. And uh, Magura's last case is about Magura, which is a Ukrainian Valkyrie, like a um, fighter maiden. And uh, there is a lot to say about this song as well. Uh, mermaids are about Ukrainian mafkas, and uh, when it comes to the two songs by Efsedu, they are more like if our songs are about the human nature of the Ukrainian mythological creatures, they went on more about the world's duality and that you know that the darkness and lightness are a part of one thing. But they also incorporated um, the Ukrainian mythological creature Zmi. Um, and it's like a Ukrainian dragon. So it's often also used in the folklore. Um, yeah. And the, the last song is actually more about people because they're also, you know, creatures <laughs> and stuff. So, yeah. You mentioned like people and like human duality. And I've been also like, I'm a big Ignea fan and I've been thinking and reading the lyrics from uh, Realms of uh, Dead and Bessia. And I'm wondering, uh, like, I think there is some continuation of storytelling. Like there are some discussion of mankind's deepest desires, flaws, and they are just with metaphors and tales. So I'm wondering, how do you see this? help well i'm just i love metaphors and i love like all this philosophical stuff although i actually i don't read about it i don't read any philosopher stuff i'm just sometimes you know i'm just get inspired and i'm observing it all 
And um, when I, um, for example, when I wrote uh, the lyrics to our songs for Bessia, I was, uh, when I decided on the creatures that I'm going to talk about, I just mm -hmm. wanted to show another nature of them. Because, for example, mm -hmm. Bosakun is a very evil spirit in the Ukrainian mythology. So he destroys everything with the power of the wind and, mm -hmm. you know, he brings disasters, illnesses and stuff. And for example, in our song, I just imagine that he is a spirit who actually wants to make friends with people, but you know, he's very powerful. And mm -hmm. that's why when he tries, you know, to make friends, he just destroys everything on yeah. his way. And, um, and actually maybe he is tired and he actually wants to live among people, among humans. And this is actually what this song is about. And when it comes to Magura's last kiss, it's also like it's a Ukrainian Valkyrie who usually, you know, she encourages people to fight and so she helps warriors with the battles and stuff. Mm -hmm. And according to the mythology, she, um, when, for example, a warrior bravely falls on the battlefield, she covers him with a wing because she's a winged creature she gives uh, him to drink from a golden cup mm -hmm. and um, she kisses him and he flies to ukrainian valhalla if you know like the <laughs> northern um, mythology and in ukrainian it's called Vidi. but um, i also thought that um, there was one mention in this mythology that uh, magura's heart belongs to the fallen soldiers. So actually she doesn't own her heart. And I decided that our Magura will be just fed up with all the wars, and battles and stuff. And in our song, she actually just uh, kisses like herself, flies mm -hmm. the way and there is no, there are no more wars, so to say. And uh, this song, um, I can make a small spoiler that it's going to include some Ukrainian lyrics as well. So mm. it's half Ukrainian, half English. Nice. So, so you'll be singing in Ukrainian? Not exactly, but there is going to be Ukrainian uh, language as well. So it's like a part of this. Yeah, song. I was hoping for it, and I'm like, I ask it less time. Let's not like ask it again for Ukrainian. I'm big fan of Ukrainian, like how you sing it and so on. So I'm like, yes. Thank you. And yeah, I think that um, we were very surprised pleasantly how people reacted to our song in Ukrainian from the realms of fire and death. Yeah. And um, yeah, that's why I think that we're no more afraid to experiment with that. We will still keep English as the main language. Mm -hmm. But um, I think that's not on Bestia, but on the next album, there will be definitely a few songs in Ukrainian. Because yes. Yeah. My wish has come true. <laughs> yeah. I can't wait for the uh, new album now. <laughs> and so we know that there are some uh, Ukrainian stuff happening uh, in the new album. So I'm wondering, will um, the new album continue the storytelling that you have been doing uh, in the two previous albums? Yeah, I think that I really liked this format so to say to combine songs like music with stories and that's why even you know everybody's asking what are you playing that's why i decided to keep it like melodic metal with storytelling and i think that this can be our like a feature so to say and for me it's always easier to build the lyrics and concepts of songs around some stories so it's like for me everything is is better like that so um yeah i'm like we're working on that album i already have the concept and uh, all i can say that it's going to be related to some ukrainian stuff as well and it's going to be related to books of a ukrainian author mm. but that's all i can say <laughs> hey, that sounds very interesting <laughs> yeah and it's not a popular author so, mm -hmm. so it will be so after <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> yes. It will be guess, guess, guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but even like if sometimes I'm, you know, we have like the close circle of friends, and when I 
Ukrainians. And when I mentioned uh, this author to them, they didn't know about mm -hmm. that. So. so I doubt any one of us though, but yeah. at least we know <laughs> something is happening. I doubt it as well. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. But I'm very excited about it. I hope that it will turn out. Yes, well. well. It's really great uh, stuff. So how is the uh, new album? Like you said, you're working on it, but like uh, at what stage are you with it? Uh, well, um, usually Evgeny, our keyboardist and uh, composer, writes all the songs. So I'd say we have like half of the album in the mm -hmm. instrumental format, but I just need to finish the book 